to Diana's Diary Room, where I dish about Big Brother 14 three times a week. You can agree with me. You can disagree. I don't care. All right, so here we go. Night one of the feeds opens up, and it is the best night of feeds for a first night I have ever seen on Big Brother. There is so much gameplay going on, your head is spinning trying to keep up with who's doing who. Now, the house has already been divided in two. Janelle and Brittany's team are working together, and supposedly Dan and Boogie's team are working together. Well, they might have been working together before the feeds came on, but by the time the feeds came on, they weren't anymore because two of their people were up. Now, what happened before the feeds came on is that the coaches have something called a coach's competition. You remember Julie Chen said that there was a new special power. Well, it's called the coach's competition. Each week the coaches compete before the nominations, after the HOH, but before the nominations, and the winner of that competition gets to pick one person from their team to be immune from nominations. So say you're down two players, or down one player like Dan. If Dan would have won, he could have protected one of his players from nomination. That didn't happen. Boogie won, and Boogie looked at his team and said, okay, I got Frank, who's liked by everybody. I have Ian, who's liked by nobody. I'm going to protect Ian so that he isn't the sacrificial lamb for the first week. So he protects Ian. Now, this was a strategic mistake on Boogie's part in normal terms, because what happens next makes it a good thing for Boogie. But normally, it would have been a mistake. He protected Ian. So what happened? Brittany's team, Willie being the HOH, nominated the strongest player from Boogie's team, Frank, and the strongest player left on Dan's team, Kara. Now, Kara is not a threat in this game. Dan picked three weak girls for his team. Why? I don't know, but he did. He didn't pick any guys. He didn't balance it out. It wasn't a, a very smart pick on Dan's part. So now Dan and Boogie are not working together, but the other two teams are convinced that they are working together. So what happens is, on the first night of the feeds, Brittany and Janelle and most of their team members want Kara to stay and Frank to go because Frank is a huge physical threat in the game. But Willie is being a Hans, and he's doing exactly what Russell did on Survivor. He's playing his own game, kudos for him on that one, and he's gone off to several people and made deals. The first person he's gone to is Frank. And Frank and him have decided they're going to play the game together. So he is going to convince his team that they are going to save the stronger guy and send out the weak girl. Okay, this seems like an insurmountable task the first night because I'm going to show you some clips. The first clip is before the POV, the night before the POV, Brittany and Janelle talking, Willie sitting at the foot of their bed, and you know, pleading his case for why Kara should go. The second clip is immediately after the POV, and it is where somehow, miraculously, Willie has flipped Brittany like a light switch, and she is now completely on board to sending Kara out. Brittany's game has not changed one iota. He's number one man. If you're after Boogie, you go after his okay. friend Diane. Okay, really, if you, make, if you make this choice, you make this choice. But in five weeks, when he beats you in an endurance HOA, you're going to feel you're like You're going to yourself in the body. You know what? When she kicks me out of this house, I'll it's feel like It's Tara. She's 110 <laughs> pounds. Let JoJo take her out. JoJo. You know, you I don't know about JoJo. I think she's going to push the red button. Team is going to try to get rid of Kara. For the next few days, we have to act very wishy wash be neutral. we got to play it like we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. The hard we don't know. It's a hard decision because there's either one, there's a pro and cons. I'm not talking five minutes, I'm talking three days. We can really if you're just going to blow our cover because he's so hardcore about getting out Frank or keeping Frank. If we're too hardcore, it's going to blow us the we got to be neutral. I know you can. I'm telling you guys, we got to be neutral. And if we work on them... The Brigade... 2.0 is here in this house. Willie is the new lane. Brittany trusts him implicitly while he's going off behind her back making deals that don't help her and don't help his team because he wants members of his own alliance nominated by Frank. 
Frank and Willie have decided that if Frank wins the HOH, he will nominate Will and send Will home. Will is part of Brittany's alliance. She's not on his team. She's on, Will is on Janelle's team. But she, he is part of the alliance, and he's also really, really good buddies with Brittany. So Willie is telling Frank to get rid of Brittany's good buddy. And so making her more aligned with him and separating that connection and somebody who might say, well, that's not really a good idea, whatever. He has also gone off to Danielle, made a deal with Danielle that he will protect her, he will take care of her, and when she gets HOH, he doesn't go up. So Danielle, who is Debbie Downer of this house, no personality, has a cloud hanging over her head at all times, not liked by anybody, has Willie over here on the side. They don't talk that much, but he knows he's protected by her and vice versa. He goes to JoJo today when the team flip-flops, which is going to happen 10 times before the vote. But today the team is all about, okay, let's save Frank and get rid of Kara. Because Kara is a huge threat. Why? Because she works for Dan. And Dan is so good at this game, he's so magical, that with these two weak players, he is going to kill us all. All right, whatever. Dan's laid around for two days doing nothing. He's not manipulating. He's telling them the truth, and they think he is just playing them to no end. Boogie, on the other hand, is, you know, thinks he's screwed, thinks his guy is going home, so he's really not playing either. He's putting his time and effort into trying to reshape Ian, which seems to be a lost cause at this point. Ian came off so cool during the, the first episode, but when you watch the feeds, he's just so awkward. He cannot connect with anybody in this house. And it's, it's really a shame because I think he's 21. He hangs out with guys his age. The more goofy you are, the funny you are, and the, you know, it, it all works for him in that setting. It doesn't work in the Big Brother house because you still have that I'm cool, you're not click going on anytime you have Brittany anywhere near the game. So, Boogie's not really playing, Dan's not really playing, but Willie's got his team convinced at this point that these two coaches have got these people, minions, working for them, and they're going to come after all of them and get them, and we should keep Frank because Frank, even though he works for Boogie, or he's on Boogie's team, will stand up to Boogie and nominate members of his own team. Yeah. Okay, so it's late Saturday evening, and I've had to go back and throw out half of what I did for the show because this house is such game talk that things change constantly. There was a conversation in the HOH early Saturday morning where everybody was over-talking each other, trying to come up with one upsman of what a great idea it would be to get rid of Kara. It was the most ridiculous conversation I've heard in a very long time because it's stupid to get rid of Kara over Frank when you're talking about week one and the opportunity to get rid of a big guy compared to a little girl. All right. The new plot in the house is that Dan is so magical in his powers that we must get rid of Dan because Dan will get people to do things. Dan's players are are two girls. One is Debbie Downer, and Debbie Downer is not liked by anybody in the house. Nobody likes this girl, except for Willie, who has a little side deal with her, and Kara, who's on her team. But even Kara walks away and goes, I can't take it anymore. She's just so serious. JoJo doesn't like her at all. Danielle was a little impressive today when she had a conversation with Willie and, and made a good pitch, almost got Willie thinking for a little bit, and then um, she had conversations with Dan. Janelle and Brittany have got it in their mind that Dan has somehow become more dangerous than Boogie. How? I don't know. Boogie came out to the hammock tonight to talk to Janelle and Brittany and basically excluded Brittany's team from it completely. If that didn't send off red alarm bells for Janelle, excluded Janelle's team, talked only to Brittany. If that didn't set off alarms for Janelle, I don't know what would. He talked the same way he talked in All Stars, and if that didn't set off alarms for her, I don't know what will. Janelle 
when she gets away from Brittany, starts to think and goes back to the, we should get out the strong guy. We should get out the strong guy. We should get out the strong guy. In an earlier conversation, which I'm going to show you now, she is telling Brittany, I made this mistake in my season, you made it in yours. Watch the clip and then we'll come back. But never but here's the thing, like don't you think that was kind of like our mistake? It's like my mistake in All Stars, I left some like really strong players in the game and then I couldn't beat them at the end. And same with you, like you left the brigade in the game. Uh huh. And you just like you can't take like powerful guys out towards the end. We don't can't beat them. Neither one of us could go to the front of the floor with three powerful guys. No. <laughs> That's why I don't want those guys getting in any sort of, like, final, even five deal. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my worst nightmare would be, be Willie, Shane, and Frank teaming up uh -huh. and, and taking out this entire house. Yeah. In this conversation, Janelle's like, you know, brigade, remember that? And that's what the viewers are all shouting right now. This is the brigade all over, Brittany. Wake up, wake up. But Brittany is so superior in everything she does. She thinks she knows everything that she doesn't take into account anybody's opinion because she's so set that she and Willie are tight. They're not tight. Willie's working around her, running circles around her. She's lecturing Willie how to play the game, and he is running circles around her strategically. He's got people on other teams vowing to keep him safe and putting up people that he wants. This is ridiculous. But Brittany cannot, for the life of her, be humble. That's just not in Brittany's nature. She is the snarky, superior mean girl, still again this year, to her own detriment. The coaches aren't really talking to each other that much. It's really kind of odd. And um, But Boogie does come out and make a plea. They are convinced that every time Dan comes and just is a nice guy to them, that he's magically working some superpower on them to woo them because he's so dangerous. So let's take out Kara and Danielle so that Dan can't be dangerous. Are you kidding me? Okay, if you took out Kara this week, why would you go after Danielle next week? He can. There is no way Dan's going to be able to take Danielle from week one to the end. It's just not possible. She's not that good of a player, and people don't like her. So I don't see how Dan is such a threat. He's not doing anything. He's lying around doing nothing for crying out loud. Um, I wish Janelle would separate herself from Brittany altogether and start thinking the way she wants to think because when she walks away and thinks and comes back she says you know strong guys strong guys strong guys and Brittany kind of goes mm -hmm. Brittany's on a high right now she is the reigning um, HOH winners coach and she's the reigning POV winners coach Shane won POV she thinks she is the master of all coaches She's not. And I think she's even playing Janelle a little bit at this point. Because for this alliance, she's talking to her team and saying, our team has to keep this from Janelle and our team has to make this. She is not as aligned with Janelle as Janelle is with her. Janelle's willing to do things that don't benefit her team in order to be aligned with Brittany. I think that's a mistake. But um, I'm hoping that there's a, a time when Janelle goes off and thinks and goes, what am I doing? This is the same exact thing. What I think about returning players is they don't learn from their mistakes. They just play the same game all over again. We may like their personalities. We may, you know, oh, I missed them from the year before. But the truth is they never change their game up, ever. All right, some of the players in the house, dynamics that are going on. Ian is so odd, it's ridiculous. I wished it wasn't true because he kind of seemed fun during the season premiere, but he is so, so awkward. The only good thing about Ian, I think, is that Boogie has to spend time on him, coaching him about social rights and norms, and this is not something you would ever think Boogie would do. So um, I think Boogie would have ignored Ian completely had he not been his coach and now he has to go and you know help this awkward guy get over some weird social norms so you see a side of boogie that you're not used to seeing that's about the only good thing about Ian right now he is literally 
a lamb being led to slaughter. Any day now, someone's going to take him out. Um, nobody in the house likes him. Jen, I really thought Jen was going to be better because of her pre-interviews. But Jen is also on the outs. They think she spies on them. Um, and she's just not as vibrant in the house as she was on her pre-interviews. I thought she was going to be this cool chick who really owned who she was and was, you know, I don't know. I was, I'm let down by Jen. JoJo. I don't know about JoJo. There are times when I think, oh, she's not that bad. I, I thought Will was overreacting to what she was doing. But now the more I see her, the more I think, eh, I'm not so impressed with JoJo either. This team, the Brittany Janelle Alliance, are busy patting themselves back on, on the back about how, how good their team is and how they're the kind of the cool people of the house and not the awkward ones and it's good that they all like each other and yada yada. How about you get out of freaking high school and start playing the freaking game? The, I just, I'm boggled by the high school mentality on Big Brother sometimes. It really just drives me nuts because, um, you're not in high school anymore. This whole I like you, you like me, and we're the cool kids thing is not going to help you win the freaking game. So you play with people you don't like or you play with people you would never hang out with in real life. Isn't that the point of throwing 14, 16 strangers into a house together? Anyhow. So, as it looks right now, Carol will be going home. Shane has the power of veto. He won't use it on Carrie, even though he has a crush on her. Shane and Frank have talked in the storage room, and they are talking about a Shane-Frank-Willie alliance. Brittany could care less about Shane. She, he is on her team. He's a strong player, but she has hitched her wagon to Willie, and she's counting on Willie to take her to the end, and she's okay if Shane is a, you know, just uh, protective meat to um, take a hit for her, and she really doesn't care. She could care less about her team except for Willie, and Willie is out working, doing all his other stuff, um, and could care less about Brittany, so it's really kind of odd. How this week will go down, Kara's probably going to go home, and then the HOH will change everything next week, and um, Willie's ability to manipulate, pretty darn good. Um, and it doesn't help that he has Brittany as a coach, and she's absolutely blinded by everything. Um, it's her, it's her superiorness and her inability to learn a lesson, and it's just going to turn around and do the same thing to her again. Now, this whole Janelle Brittany um, thing about going back into the game, they're convinced that week three and four, somewhere in there. There's going to be a endurance competition in which the coaches get to play the actual game. And so what they're trying to do is set themselves up for that. And, you know, Janelle, she has these moments where she talks logically and she says, you know, Boogie had a strong man alliance. This people, you know, she talks about how a girl has never beaten a guy in the end and how there should be a girl power alliance, and yet at the same time, she's kowtowing and agreeing to send home Kara. This makes no sense whatsoever. I just, I, I want to see Brittany and Janelle separate at this point so that they'll start thinking independently because, um... I just don't think it's a good thing for Janelle. I like Janelle. I would like to see her play and really be strategic, but it's not happening right now. And Dan is not doing anything. The coaches really aren't doing that much, frankly. I'm impressed with the newbies at this point, or at least a handful of the newbies who are working. The most strategic are Willie, Frank, and Shane's joining in on it. And um, the girls are just... They're just agreeers, you know. Joe. Okay, let's talk about Joe. Joe's a little awkward. Um, he's a little, um, how would I say this? He's a little excitable. But he's a nice guy, and he's not stupid, and he has people nailed, and he's very perceptive. And Brittany just dismisses everything that comes out of his mouth. Joe sees things for what they are, but Brittany wants to poo-poo whatever he has to say. Um... So I like Joe, 
even though he's excitable and and wants to play the game so bad um, that it comes off as a little awkward, he is actually right on a lot of points. Okay, so Willie and Frank think that they can ditch their coaches and that they think that their coaches are tied to them, but I don't think that Frank is actually going to ditch Boogie at all. They had strategy talk earlier this morning and late last night where Frank said that he was going to nominate Willie. Who knows who Willie is actually working with at this point? I can't tell. Um, he does talk a lot about ditching his coach. There are two problems with that. you got the coach's competition, and the coach can choose to save a different person, um, or the coach can stay up in that room and mess all your strategy talk up because if you win HOH, your coach is in the coach's suite right next to you, and your HOH is no longer your own. So you're kind of tied to your coach whether you want to be or not. Um, I'd like to see coaches work together. If someone has an HOH and they know somebody's being targeted, one of them could throw the competition to the other to protect somebody on another team, things like that. There are plenty of ways that this could play out more strategically than this, oh, Dan's a really big threat, oh, Boogie's a really big threat thing that's going on right now. Take out a strong player and start thinking strategically. That's what I'd like to see happen. All right, that's Diana's Diary Room for today, and maybe <laughs> I'll be able to put together a better one in two days. Tweet with me at Diana Watt because from now on I'm going to include your comments in the show and your feedback about what you think is going on in the house and how you think players should be playing, things like that. All right, have a great day, night, bye. Bye.